Hello there. When last we left, you were making some graphs based on the um, diameter of the blood drop when it hits the ground or hits a horizontal surface, what size splat it makes, and doing this when you know what height it was dropped from. This information that you have, I know this is not necessarily what your graph looked like, but this is the graph that we're going to use um, for today. And uh, this is the some data where the diameter of a blood drop when it hits a horizontal surface it splats in millimeters when you measure it directly across the center of the circle because a blood drop that is falling to the ground only under the influence of gravity and no other outside forces will form a perfect circle when it hits. So across the center of that circle, not measuring any spines or satellite spatter versus the height that it dropped from, which is all well and good. And you think, okay, great, I got some um, practice making a graph. But this data and this graph can be more useful to you than just, hey, it's practice making a graph. Because now what you can do is be at a crime scene where you don't know exactly what may have happened, and you can measure the diameter of blood drops that are found at the crime scene and figure out what height they fell from, and that can help you determine what happened. For example, when blood was dripping from an open wound, was the person on their hands and knees, and therefore the height of the blood was dropping only from about 30 or 40 centimeters, or were they standing and it would have been you know, closer to two meters even more so than 140 centimeters. So let me show you what I mean by this. So let's say you're at a crime scene, you have circular blood drops and you measure their diameter, and the diameter of the blood drop is 10 millimeters. If you have this handy dandy graph with you, you find 10 millimeters, you come straight across on the 10 millimeters, and then when you find where it intersects the line, you drop straight down from there, don't mind me wiggling a little bit, and you're halfway between 20 and 40 centimeters for a height from which it dropped. So that means that that blood drop fell from a height of 30 centimeters, which is about six in, or 12 inches. Well, what about if you have a blood with a diameter of 12 millimeters? Well, up here you find the 12 millimeters, you follow straight across, and then you find where it intersects the line and go straight down from there. And that blood drop would have fallen from a height of approximately 50 centimeters. This is not meant to be um, precise down to the hundredth of a centimeter, but it does give you a basic idea. As I mentioned, the difference between someone being on their hands and knees um, when they're bleeding versus someone who was standing when they were bleeding. So what I want you to do with this so I have some practice for you to do on the next slide. I will send you this graph separately so that you can practice. Um, so as we're doing this practice, I'll give you the blood drop diameter and you use the graph to figure out how high it fell from. So if you need to, you will need to pause the video and then if you need to flip back and forth between this video and um, the graph on your computer or if you want to print out the graph <clears throat> that might be handy as well. So let me do the first one for you and then show you how it's done and then you can go through the rest of them and I will um, give you pauses in between where you can pause the, the video. So let's say that our first one is the blood drop diameter right across the center, not including any spines or satellite spatter, is nine millimeters. So what we do then is go back to this graph. Nine millimeters would be halfway between eight and 10. So we come straight across to where it intersects the line, which is right about there. Then you come straight down from there. And if we consider that 30 is gonna be right about there, then this is probably gonna be at about 25. So that blood drop that fell from a height of nine millimeters fell, or that caused a splat that was about nine millimeters in diameter, fell from a height of about 25 centimeters. 
So now I'm going to go through and give you others to practice with. And I will pause in between each one so that you have time to pause the video and you can do it for yourself. And I do want you to stop and do it because you're going to see this again and you're going to have to be able to do it on your own. So here we go. If you measure the diameter of a blood drop and its diameter is 7 millimeters, pause the video right now, it will have dropped from about 15 centimeters. If you have a blood drop that has a diameter of about 13 and a half millimeters, when you pause the video and figure it out, you will see that it fell from a height of approximately 65 centimeters. A blood drop with a diameter of 12 millimeters would have dropped from a height of 50 centimeters, which of course we already did. And then a blood drop with a diameter of 10 and a half millimeters would have dropped from a height of about 35 centimeters. If you have any questions on this, please contact me. If you're not sure how to do this still, please contact me. Um, we will discuss this when next we meet. And until then, I hope that you are doing well. Bye.